Do we belong to Christ? How do we tell? We look just a little bit further. Um, this is still in Galatians 5, verse 24. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Okay, so if you belong to Christ, then you've crucified your flesh. Simple enough to tell. Um, how do you crucify your flesh? What exactly does does that mean? Let's say, firstly, it means that you are resisting the desires of your flesh. Those desires that Paul mentioned run contrary to God's desires. As I said before, it doesn't mean that you're perfect. It doesn't mean that you never have any kind of an issue or a slip up or anything like that with these different areas. Um, but there, there is one, and I think this crucifying the flesh has, again, has some serious implications with it. If you have crucified your flesh, then those things do not have power over you anymore. Think about, um, Jesus probably wouldn't be a good example of this because Jesus did still have the power to do this, but let's, let's look at somebody else crucified, hanging on the cross. They, they have no power over you. They're, they're bound, their, their hands and their feet are nailed to this cross. They, they can do nothing to you. As you're standing there. The only way that it has any power over you is if you give it power over you. It can't come down unless you let it down. As long as your flesh is crucified, it has no power over you. So... Again, think about the example of someone hanging on a cross. Could they could they make you do anything? I mean, they could yell or tell you to do something, but could they physically make you? No, because they're stuck to that cross. You may still hear them. Um, just like you can still hear your your flesh. You can still hear the desires or get um, a, a spontaneous thought. Um, I, I use, so I've done some counseling with people previously on uh, addiction. And one thing that I've discussed a lot with this, um, I, I bring up is this analogy of a bird landing on your head. You know, you can't, you can't necessarily stop a bird from landing on your head, but you can stop them from building a nest there. So you can't control every single thought that pops into your head, but you can control whether or not you sit and dwell on it. That's the same thing that we're talking about here. Um, those flesh, fleshly desires that are contrary or run counter to God's desires, you will still have thoughts. Stuff will still pop in your head. There will still be... Um, instances where things come to your mind that you want to do that you used to do or um, things along these lines, you can't control those popping in your head. Um, I would say that's, that's not sin, that those pop in your head. That's the fact that you're still in a fallen state. But it does become sin if you sit and dwell on it. It's pretty simple. So... This is also not a one-time thing. This isn't a, I make the decision one time, I'm going to I'm gonna nail the flesh up onto the cross, crucify my flesh with Jesus, and then that's just it. This is an everyday thing. Multiple times a day. Say so every time that you have a thought, every time that something like that happens, 
you have to make the decision to keep flesh on the cross. And this will continue to happen. It's a continual process, choosing to sacrifice your flesh until the day you die. When that day comes, we put off our flesh wholly, and then we rise from death to life. We have a new, pure, uncorrupt flesh. Thanks for watching all the way through the end. Don't forget to hit the like button. Comment down below. Let us know what you thought of the video. If you liked it, didn't like it, give us some feedback. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you never miss when we come out with new videos, which is pretty frequently. Thanks. God bless.